Peggy 16. Hello and welcome to another episode of the Housecast. Uh, today we're talking about Returnal, a PS5 exclusive. And with us is Harry Kruger, the game director. Hey everyone. So, why the forest, Harry? This is actually a, a place I come to fairly often when I want to get away from the noise of the city and just collect my thoughts a bit. I just find uh, this kind of forest environment really inspiring in many ways. Yeah, I get it. It's just... Uh... Seems a bit secluded, that's all. Just want to get back home for the night. Oh yeah, don't worry man, we have all the time in the world. Sounds good. So, how would you describe Returnal in a nutshell? I think it's clearly the biggest and most ambitious title we've ever made. The goal from the beginning was to take our gameplay-centric kind of creative values and just really take them to the next level. You know, and also, of course, have a really compelling narrative this time as well. I have begun having visions of where I have yet to go. They lead me continually downwards from Olympus and into myself. the main character. How would you describe her? What's her role in the game? Celine is our deep space scout and she answers this mysterious signal on this planet called Atropos. But as she goes to check it out, she crash lands and quickly succumbs to the horrors that await her there. And upon her death, she finds herself reawakening in the cockpit just moments before the inevitable crash landing again. So she's trapped in this time loop, in this nightmare cycle where even death is no escape. I have found a deceased Astro Scout here. Checking identification on a helmet. It's... <sighs> There's a lot of different things that act as inspiration. What were the main things for you? A lot of different influences came together. One of the biggest ones, of course, in addition to the dark sci-fi, which is kind of evident, is a Lovecraft in horror as well. So thematically, just, you know, what lurks in the shadows, the great unknown, and these kind of cosmic forces at play. And most importantly, how the mind kind of reacts to that, you know? How do these psychological elements play out in game? Although we are inspired by horror, I didn't necessarily want to scare the player, but definitely wanted to get under their skin to unsettle them. Clearly, there are certain forces at play here that are beyond Celine's comprehension. In addition to that, every time that Selene awakens, the planet is slightly different. In the game, you can see this manifesting as Selene slowly descends into madness as she tries to comprehend what is actually happening to her. I'm starting to see patterns that I know are not there. I cannot trust my memories. The planet knows me better than I know myself. To the right. The variety of dangerous fauna on this world is beyond anything I've previously experienced. I've never encountered such hostility. You do push in a lot of these alien enemies, but there is a certain, let's say, earthly aspect to them as well. Deep sea creatures, for example. Yeah, that was definitely the biggest inspiration for our creature designs. So there's something really uh, unsettling about seeing these deep sea creatures with their bioluminescence. That kind of chaotic and organic movement, you know, combined with like, the, the lights, it feels really, really alien. This environment has changed. What is happening here? There's a nice sort of natural environment, you know, with the forests combining with that darkness that you have there. Just like many great stories, a returnal starts when you crash land into the forest. But that's not the only environment, of course. We did want to have this rich kind of biodiversity in the game. 
So lots of different uh, biomes, each with their own unique uh, importance of the story. That's... that can't be here. What about the call of that house? We wanted the house to be a bit of a break from the hectic bullet hell explosive gameplay, give a nice change of pace, and give players an opportunity to rediscover Celine's history together. I feel like our childhood homes are probably our most personal spaces, right? So we associate them with a lot of our, our fondest memories and sometimes with traumatic ones as well. This is a really haunting element that keeps coming back repeatedly. So it's kind of like a nightmare that you can't really wake up from. Hmm. Whose place this is? Yeah, I've uh, I've seen this before. I don't think there's anybody home. It's weird. The longer I spend here, the more I can feel my sanity slip away. Creating a game like this, you know, the music is a huge part of creating a good atmosphere. How did you take on that task? We've been working with Bobby Krillick aka Hacks and Cloak. He's been really helping us elevate that emotional space for the game as well, both in terms of those bombastic epic highs, but also the more subtle, moody treatments as well. I think it comes across really well, and, and what's interesting to me is also like the, you know, the audio experience, just that 3D immersion, if you will, getting into that environmental awareness where you can hear things moving around you, yeah, for sure. For a game like Returnal, it's absolutely critical to have as accurate spatial awareness as possible to assist you with making decisions during combat. The 3D audio was actually a great new way to enhance that feedback for players. Yeah, it's very different to react to everything around you when you have... Yeah, I'm not sure if we should be here. Let's go this way. This is weird. Do you know where the car is? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's uh, to the left. Every time you play, the game is unique. Unique encounters and threats. You know, the story evolves with that as well. Plus the gameplay. Yeah, that was the constant from the beginning, right? So keep that house mark explosive action, lots of flare, particles, explosions, and just crank it up to 13, really. And the dual sense with those adaptive triggers. The way that the adaptive triggers work is that if you press the left trigger halfway down, you get the aiming down sights. And then after that point, you get a really satisfying click that enters the alt fire mode. Combined with the haptics of the DualSense, the adaptive triggers are a really satisfying way to interact with the weaponry in the game. The adaptive triggers are awesome. Yeah, it just makes everything feel much more satisfying and...
you know, Mikhail, in Returnal, you will encounter many mysteries and seemingly impassable obstacles. But by exploring the world, you will unlock new ways to advance in the game and in the story. anybody home. Weird. Do you see the white shadow? 